so now let us look into basic map reduce operations uh, on our uh, collections and uh, we will start with map filter reduce and we will see few others also okay so uh, uh, i will directly get onto the scala prompt or scala ripple and uh, uh, there is an easier way to to create a list very quickly that is something like this let's do 1 to 100 so it will just create range of values let's say i want to uh, get the uh, all the even numbers from this and I want to square them up and get the final total. So that is the problem statement. I just want to get sum of even numbers between 1 and 100. So uh, you can actually convert this range into a list or a set or uh, map, whatever you want. As long as map, uh, as long as the elements are key value pairs, you can also convert into map. But these values can be easily converted into a set or map. And the way you can do is val l equal to the 1 to 100 to list it will convert the range into list you can see the data type here l is of type list and each element in the list is of type integer now my problem statement is get sum of all even numbers Okay, there are many approaches to do it. You don't need to uh, write the way I am showing. I am just uh, writing the way I am writing now because I just want to introduce you to solving a problem use leveraging MapReduce approach. Okay, so the idea of MapReduce is um, filter is also considered to be map. So if there is any transformation that needs to be done at row level. For example, you get, got a row. Uh, in this case, you want to filter for even uh, numbers. That is kind of a row level transformation. That is considered to be map type of function. Similarly, we also want to square each of the numbers. So for each input record, we want to square, the, square it uh, so that we got uh, uh, square of that value. And that is also row level transformation. But later we want to add all these things. It's an aggregation type of operation. So anything that is row level is categorized under map function. Anything that is aggregation, join, uh, so on and so forth is considered to be reduced type of operation. Okay. So in this case, we want to get sum of squares of all even numbers. Actually, it is sum of squares of all even numbers. Okay, so here we have to filter for even numbers, we have to square each of the number and then we have to add those numbers. First we need, we need to understand what should be done first. Obviously reduce is the final stage, it's very obvious. But when it comes to uh, uh, getting even numbers versus computing sum of squares, what should be done first? At any time, if you have this uh, conflict of which path you need to take, one of the thumb rule is just do the filtering first and then uh, perform the uh, whatever operation you want to uh, perform. So in this case, if, if you square first, you have to square 100 numbers and then you have to filter. But if you filter first, the square operation has to be done only on uh, 50 numbers you don't need to do it on the 100 numbers so the number of operations will go down if you filter first and then square rather than squaring first and uh, filter you have to perform 200 operations if you square first and filter versus only 150 operations if you filter first and square so that being said let us see so i am creating a variable called m here uh, sorry f here and then there is an API called filter on it. You can see the syntax. I'm sorry, there is a typo. Uh, once you uh, uh, type up to the function name, if you hit tab twice, you can see the uh, syntax of that function. If you see, uh, this uh, filter function takes a function as argument, which is already covered earlier, right? Uh, so as it takes function as argument, uh, that function which is which we need to uh, pass um, have to take one argument 
of type integer and has to return boolean so this integer is inherited from the type of element in the list okay so the type of element in the list is integer hence this is of type integer so when i apply l dot filter this filter function will be invoked 100 times um, with each of this value once in each iteration okay so let let me name it as rec or element implies and each number i just want to see if it is um, uh, even or not so if uh, element mod 2 equal to 0 it is even otherwise it is odd so you don't need to write if condition if element mod 2 equal to 0 then true else false you don't need to write that you just provide the uh, true condition here without any if and all and if it returns true that value will be considered and added to a new list so f will be a new list l is the old list on which we are applying the filter um, f will be the new list where it will only have the even numbers you can see here f only have the even numbers now i have to square these numbers uh, we cannot actually filter and square in one shot when you try to solve the problem in map reduce approach you have to first apply the filter and then you have to apply the map function so here val m equal to f dot map f is the fil uh, a filtered collection where it has only even numbers and you can hit tab twice here to see the syntax and this also takes a function as argument and that function takes one argument of type integer because uh, our f is type of integer so the, whatever argument will be passing to this map function also takes um, uh, also expects uh, a argument of type integer and it returns something called b that b could be anything it could be integer it could be float it could be string it could be anything okay uh, when we apply map we are transforming one record to another and that record can be of any type okay so in this case i just want to square it up that's why i'm saying rec multiplied by rec and you can see here each even number is squared up and now we can say r equal to m dot reduce and here you need to understand how we typically write um, um, the the similar functionality in conventional programming and uh, how it is represented in map reduce approach using reduce api so conventionally what you will do you will create a variable initialize it to a zero or something and then you will write a for loop like, like this right so m is collection and each uh, in each iteration we are uh, assigning element uh, from m to e uh, e represent one element in each iteration and then i add it to total and total will give you the uh, sum of all these squares this is how you you develop uh, uh, in conventional approach in functional approach what you will do is you will say m dot reduce and if you see the syntax it takes one argument um, sorry two arguments a1 a1 and it returns a1 and the final value is also a1 unlike earlier the return types are collections here we it will return only one value and all these values um, have to be of same type and in this case a1 is of type integer because our m is uh, having the elements of type integer okay so here i have to define two attributes uh, i'm saying it as total comma element and then total plus element and hit enter and you got the same value so the way it works is in the first iteration to total will be this one and element will be this one when i say total plus element it will add these two values and total will be reset to the sum of these two uh, whatever is the result which is 20 so it actually do like this sum of 4 comma 16 comma 36 
or you can actually put like this 4, four plus 16 plus 36 uh, after second iteration after adding this this one it will be something like this so and it will continue until all the elements are done so as part of the first iteration total will be 4 element will be 16 those two will be added and that will be assigned to total so the result of this will be uh, total which is 20 as part of the second iteration total will be 20 and element will be 36 those two values will be added and uh, total will become 56 uh, and then uh, element uh, as part of the third iteration total will be 56 and element will be 64 and those values will be added continuously until the final number is added and finally whatever if there are more elements uh, whatever value is there in total will be returned which is 171,700 in this case okay so that is about simple use, usage of map filter and reduce functions but on top of this there is a rich collection api okay so for example if you say l dot tab you have so many functions okay uh, uh, to, to get the sum you don't need to write uh, this much complicated logic you just say uh, the same thing can be solved by saying l dot filter uh, or actually we can yeah we can say yes as to f already filter right we can say f dot sum you don't need to write reduce uh, and all but if you have to do the sum of squares you can apply map function um, and we can get the squares of each numbers and then we can also say m dot sum okay for simple uh, uh, functionality like sum mean max and all uh, there are uh, apis already available okay and in some cases uh, there could be apis available in um, uh, in one type of collection but not in another type of collection for example let's say i convert l to a set okay now uh, l is of type set and uh, you can see the numbers are all uh, uh, random they are not sorted properly so if I, if i want to sort that numbers if i say s dot there are no functions uh, in s which can sort the data what i can do i can actually say to list and then dot and you can see the sort functions such as sorted sort by sort with so in this case you can use sorted to just sort the data you see data is automatically sorted so some functions will be specific to set and if you want to apply those functions on list if there are no side effects you can convert the list to set and you can apply those functions from set similarly if there are certain functions which are available on list but not on set you can convert a set to list the way i have shown and you can use the functions so over a period of time you just have to explore all these functions and get as much comfortable as possible but uh, uh, to get into spark whatever knowledge you gained so far uh, is uh, uh, rudimentary you have to practice a bit on this uh, i will uh, give you uh, a proper use case after covering the basic io operations uh, and then uh, uh, you can create your own problem statements and can come up with few solutions using collections api